I think yeah. we're on. I think we are. Hi, everybody. It's Kate Richburg. I'm going to scoot my little screen back so I can see everybody. It's Kate Richburg. And look who's sitting right over here to my right. It's Grace Noland. I know you guys were saying, hey, where's Gracie? And I was saying, hey, we need to get Gracie on. And we'll tell you, uh, we'll tell you a little bit about what Grace has got going on. It's super exciting. Thanks, Grace. Look, yeah. there's our little thing right there. We're all set Your to go. On, My mom's on. on. Hi, everybody. It's great to see you all. Um, so I know you haven't seen Grace on our camera for a while. It's because she's been super busy behind the scenes. Totally. You've been super busy behind the scenes. Incredibly busy. Yes. <laughs> Some of you guys know that Grace has gone uh, part-time for us now. She's um, kind of expanding her horizons. But we also wanted to let you guys know that Gracie is going from part-time to no time. Well, yes, well, I know. It's very sad. It Kate. is sad. It is really hard. Yeah. You know, it was hard just going to part time. Yeah. Oh, uh, excuse me, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're going to have a cry fest with Grace here. Yeah. But we just wanted, um, you know, Gracie was uh, someone, at, uh, and today is actually her last day here at beachhop.com. But she, I thought it would be a wonderful way to finish off your last day because Grace was so instrumental in starting these Facebook Lives with us. When I had the idea and said, Gracie, let's do a Facebook Live. What it. did you, Gracie said? We're, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, um, so you and I did our first international broadcast. You did. Yeah. You did our first international yeah. broadcast. In a year, we did so much. It's and true. And you guys have grown so it's much. It's true. It's I'm true. super proud to yeah. be part of it. Well, we're super, super stoked to be able to have had you here for your two and a half year tenure with us. You are the one who, along with Karen, made our website look so super beautiful. Um, we're really going to miss Grace, and I know you guys will miss her. I'll miss you But too. you never know what friendly face might pop totally. up as a special guest. Totally. Now she can be a special guest. Definitely. So. And I do want to do a really big shout out to our team. Because we are the faces and, you know, voices of mm -hmm. Beach Shop, but we have a spectacular behind the scenes. Because you were it's mentioning true. behind the scenes, and we talked about Karen, but mm -hmm. the fulfillment, the inventory, the shipping. That's right. It's just such a pleasure. Mm -hmm. oh. And it's that's what makes it so hard. Yeah. The, the community and the people, it's just, yeah. it's really good place. Well, you're going to leave a big hole, a big Gracie-sized <laughs> hole in beadshop.com, but uh, so people can stay aware of your uh, jewelry activities, Definitely. right? and it's been stagnant for a while because yeah. I've been so busy, <laughs> right? but it's still fun. Right, um, and so you're on Instagram. I am. I'm on yep. Instagram. I still have my Etsy, but I don't know if I'm going to keep that mm -hmm. up, to be honest. I yep. think for now, I just really love creating. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to part with everything. Right. And, well, well, your we'll jewelry see. trends, your jewelry uh, design is always in transition, I guess. Totally. Mine is too, for sure. You know, you get in a work mode, you're all, I'm going to put all that jewelry right. up. And then it goes, you're all, shoo, I've done that. <laughs> yeah. So now I can rest a little bit on my world. Definitely. So. Definitely. Well, Gracie. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, we're going to get to our project, but Definitely. Grace is wearing, if in right. honor of Gracie's uh, last day, you can always jump in and make one of her favorite projects. This was my very first. Oh, there we go. No, there I, we are. I know the struggle is real. There we are. <laughs> my very first bracelet here at Bead Shop was this Folklorico. Um, yeah, the Folklorico yeah, piece. And I just, that was my first love at Bead Shop, mm -hmm. and so I created my own. And yeah. If you guys, it says no sound. No sound. Oh, maybe just for Char. Maybe Sorry. just for Char, yes. Char. Anyway, it was my first love, and I mm -hmm. was like, I really want to do this project, but I don't know how to do anything. Yes. And it had silk wrap, it had laddering, yeah. it, it had all the basics. And well, I'm going to move the camera sure. down just a little bit, Gracie. You can show that just real quick so people can see the uh, the Folklorico in all its glory and then we'll get to our then we'll get to our project Definitely. and Grace will get back to <laughs> getting the rest of her photos in line exactly. before she leaves today but isn't that a beautiful piece I just think it's so so lovely thank you um, it's a super great thing for wrapping so Yes, Folklorico. You guys can find it on beadshop.com. And I subbed out the charms for these cute yeah, fishies. Yeah, those little fishies. They're so good. It's so good. Well, I'll pull this yes. back up so we can 
There we go. See how I have to now work the camera without you Thank and you, Brandon. As I glance stuff. at the, right. the, comments, the comments, I really appreciate that. Coming yes. From you, so thank well, you. we really, really have appreciated all of your. There we go. It's closer to us now. There we go. All of your. Am I in? I'm almost I in. I hope you're in. Yeah, I'm Come in. On in. <laughs> well, all of your hard work and everything for us. So I will give you a big hug from everybody out there. Thank you. Thank you. But you're not leaving quite yet. Not, so not, not till not yeah. till this afternoon. Exactly. All right. And we'll be in touch. Yes. Thanks, thanks Gracie Kate. Grace. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks you guys for just um, for uh, hanging in there with that little bit. I really did want to give Gracie a little bit of a tribute and a shout out, and I didn't want her to disappear without you guys being able to say goodbye. So, but her designs will live on for us as well as you never know when she might pop up in front of the camera again. So. All well wishes to Gracie. All right, so I am going to turn this camera around and we're going to get to our project. Um, I'm really excited to share it with you today. So let me do a little bit of camera work as I come on around. So just bear with me here as I do my, my positioning. There we go. I'm getting better at this positioning, you guys. I'm really practicing. There's what we've got going on there. Alrighty, and I'm gonna move my stuff in so you guys can see what's going on. Gracie, you're getting a lot of love. You're gonna wanna read these comments. All right. <laughs> there we go, now I can see everybody. Okay, so um, let me show you guys what we're gonna be working on today. I know a lot of you in our Facebook group have been commenting about there's a, a design that's going around the interwebs um, that's called the goddess bracelet and the goddess bracelet I think is a really I think kind of a fun fast weekend project you could make it as a bracelet or as a necklace it's pretty simple and I'm just going to create it right on air with you guys today. Now, if you don't know what the goddess bracelet looks like, what it is is, let me show you my kind of sad little drawing here. But essentially, it's um, a design that's kind of two strands of Softlex, or I'm going to use Softlex. And it's a bead offset, a bead on a single strand, offset by a jump ring going through two strands. Okay, and I thought it would be fun to do them with our melon beads and some of our jump rings that I've got over here, as well as I kind of worked out, I think, some interesting mechanics for this. So I think you guys will dig this. So at least I, I hope you will. So for this goddess bracelet, what we use, I've got our six millimeter melon beads here. And I've got two, what we like to call, two flavors of the beads. I've got um, sapphire antique bronze, which are these. And I've got the um, lavender gold luster. Those are the two beads I've got here. Now, I've pulled some clasps. You can use any clasp that you like, right? I chose our plain and simple, our just kind of our basic toggle, and I have it in a gold, I have it in a silver. I also thought it would be fun to throw a heart charm on there since it's getting close to Valentine's Day, uh, if we're watching this live, it's close to Valentine's Day. And that's a great colorway that goes with the blue. And I know you guys have been digging purple, so I pulled these purple beads and I'm using the, the kind of the gold findings and charms with the purple. And what you're going to need, I thought I would experiment because, you know, my free tip Fridays are usually somewhat off the cuff. So I'm going to experiment with both the 6 millimeter rings and the 7 millimeter rings. And we're going to take a look at the difference and see if we like one over the other and see maybe they'll both work, right? The Softlex I'm using, you could use any Softlex color you like, but I have the Softlex beading wire. I have it in fine. It's the .014 size right there, um, and I think this will be perfect for that. Now the tools that you're going to need, you guys, uh, pretty simple. You're going to need a crimping plier because we're going to be crimping. Okay. 
You're going to need a wire cutter because we're going to be cutting our soft flex. And then for the jump rings, and we've talked a little bit about this on other broadcasts, but you're going to need two pairs of pliers. I'm going to use, oh, Gita, there she is, bless her heart. What we do without our support team from Denmark, our Gita. Thank you so much for your linking. Um, we're going to use this chain nose plier here and then this bent chain nose. Okay. So, and for those of you who are watching this at a later date or those of you who want to review this again over the weekend, I'm going to pop a blog post up after this broadcast that'll have all of the info in it. The blog post, you can find our blog over on um, our uh on our blog site, it's called The Bead Table, and if you just put in uh, The Bead Table uh, blog or Bead Shop blog, that will pop up, or there's also a link to it on our homepage on beadshop.com. So it was a great question, Trish. You were asking if I were using regular jump rings or soldered. Now you could um, use soldered rings. Um, and we do have some soldered rings actually coming in for some future projects, but, and I'm going to tighten the screen up here so you guys can see, um, but I've used our opened jump rings here, and I'm going to give you a quick little review on how to close them so they're really super closed, okay? So let me pull out, these are 6 millimeter, and these are the 7 millimeter. And I think that both of these sizes will work. One might be a little bulkier than the other. And so I just wanted to test out and see what I liked the most. So now to close your jump ring, I'm going to get this big 7 millimeter one first. So it'll be easier for you guys to see. I'm going to hold, I'm right handed. Okay, so my right hand, or my left hand rather, is holding the jump ring kind of stable. Okay, and you can see that the join, or I don't know if you can see the join, but I'll show you there. The join is pointing up towards 12 o'clock. Okay, now with my bent chain nose, I'm going to come in, and this is the tool I'm going to use to close that jump ring. So I'm going to work it back and forth. That work hardens the jump ring on the opposite end right here, and it keeps that jump ring closed. So it looks like we've had a few questions about the jump rings. Now this is our six, I'm sorry, our seven millimeter ring here. And the gauge of wire, this is, I think it's about a 17 gauge wire. Um, but you can use thinner or thicker jump rings. And you could just stack them up in between a little bit more if they're thinner and you wanted them to show a little bit better. Um, or a thicker jump ring, you only may want to use one. There was also the question earlier, can I use oval jump rings? Can we use oval jump rings? And the answer is, I bet you could, um, as long as everything looked like it fit together okay. So I'm just gonna finesse that to make sure it's nice and closed. Because not only do I want my jump ring to be closed this way, but I also want it to be closed, you know, the two ends meeting up this way as well. So you want it to be closed uh, in both directions. And so Diane, that's a really great question that you had that just popped up. You asked, so that bending doesn't weaken the metal. It, it doesn't actually, because these jump rings have not been work hardened so that they're super hard. So, so the metal still has a ways to go before it's fully hard. So if I move this jump ring back and forth like this, I'm actually work hardening, toughening that metal up over here a little bit. So it keeps that jump ring from popping open. So that's the secret to having jump rings to keeping them closed is doing that little back and forth motion that work hardens it a bit and my jump ring will stay sprung closed. And Pamela, it's a great question, is the project on the website already? I'm actually going to write up a blog post on it, so look for it in about an hour or two after this broadcast, and I will post it here on our beadshop.com page, 
and our beadshop.com community Facebook page as well. Okay, so I'm just going to keep closing a few of these. Oh, and Katie, you were saying oval jump rings and rondelles. I bet they would look great together if your bead is a little elongated. I think that would be a great way, um, a great way to utilize those. I'm going to close a few more of these smaller rings. This is the six millimeter jump ring, and these are actually in a satin gold. And the larger jump rings I have are in a more of a shiny gold, but I actually don't mind the contrast in metal finishes. So I'm going to close a few of these as well, because we may want to contrast the jump rings right in the piece, right? It's time for experimentation. Why not? That's what Free Tip Friday is all about. It's the ramblings of my brain coming straight to you guys. Alrighty, so I've got, I'm going to do one more since I've got four of the seven mil. I'll get four of the six mil. And the six millimeter, the wire's a little bit thinner, looks like it's about an 18 gauge here. Okay, so what I've done to prepare this project, I'm, let me widen the screen just a little bit. Uh, what I've done is I've cut that 0.014 soft flex, and you're asking me, Kate, how long did you cut that thread? or that beading wire, I will tell you, it's about, maybe I cut 14 inches, no, probably a little bit more, that's 12, 12, 13, 14, about 15 inches, okay, about 15 inches. Beth, that's a really great question. Let me repeat this for everyone because I do have a thought about this. Beth, Beth's question was, how do you stop your jump rings from changing color? Mine even change in the container before I use them. Let me, at, let me just give you a quick tip because I do this also sometimes with my metal tools. Um, you know how when you get a new pair of shoes or something that comes in a box and you get those little packets of silica gel? and they're in a, it always says, do not eat, right? And they're just little white packages and they say, do not eat on them. The silica gel uh, is a moisture absorbent. Um, so if I have my rings or all of my things in a big like, you know, container, uh, like tackle box or something, you can throw a couple of those silica gel packets right in. Um, and that actually helps a lot with tarnishing. Um, you can also keep your rings in the bag itself because it keeps it from contacting the air or moisture that might be in the air, especially if you live closer to the ocean. You can also get, we carry a project called, uh, a project called, have a product called Pro Polish Pads, and Pro Polish Pads are terrific for taking off the light, um, kind of the light tarnish coating that might come onto your pieces. So those are both, those are all good ways of kind of trying to keep, um, keep your pieces from tarnishing. That's just the kind of the way metal is. It does tarnish, but pro polish pads are fantastic and keeping them in bags and using those silica gel um, little pads, little packets are a great way to work. So what I did, again, uh, this 15-inch piece of wire, I've doubled it over, and I've put it through a wire guard. Now, some of you may be aware of a wire guard. The wire guard looks like this. It's like a little horseshoe. Let me get it up here so you guys can see it. It's like a little horseshoe, and the horseshoe is open. The ends are open, and you string your soft flex right through the little opening in the horseshoe. So you can see that, how I've strung it through, and I, you can see the soft flex, it's kind of sitting out right there. And as I come around, I've put my little loop clasp, the loop end of my toggle clasp. Now, I pulled one of our hearts, this is our Be Still heart, and I wanted to really securely add a clasp to this. Now, or not a clasp, but charm rather, to this. Now see how the charm, the way that the loop is situated, 
how it's this way on the charm. So if I'd put it on a necklace or something, it's facing the right way. But if I put it on this necklace, or this bracelet rather, with the jump ring facing like this, it would be situated in the wrong direction. So I thought, well, why not just string it on? I'm going to string it on this bottom one. Why not just string it on like so? Oh, Kathy says she just threw a whole bunch of those packets away. Well, Kathy, you'll just have to buy more shoes and get more silica gel. That elicited a chuckle from Cara over there because she likes shoes as much as I do. So can you see how nicely that little heart charm sits on the um, wire guard? So it's just sitting there nicely. It's on there really firmly and tightly, so nothing's going to go awry. So now I'm going to go ahead and crimp this closed so I'll be ready to start the project. I'm going to get a 2 by 2 millimeter um, crimp tube there and we're going to slide that bad boy on. I'm going to center these up. And let's put both of these strands through my crimp tube. Gosh, these crimp tubes are small, aren't they? There we go. Now, the way, there's a lot of stuff going on here. The way that the, um, that this is all put together, I've got the clasp here, the loop side, okay? I've got my charm facing in the right direction. If it didn't face in the right direction, you could just add a jump ring here. Um, oh, great, and Kath, uh, Lynn just made uh, a great comment uh, earlier that said you could use a small piece of chalk in the baggie. Great idea, the, choggy, the chalky, the chalk also helps, um, helps to keep the moisture away. Now, the little feet, or the little legs of the wire guardian, I'm just gently um, coaxing in, tightening in, so that the connection isn't wide on the end, so it comes to a nice taper. Now, of course, you've seen me do this time and time again, but I'm going to come in, I'm going to crimp my crimp bead closed. And what I do, and you can see we've got a great skill builder on how to crimp our crimp, our crimp tubes, but we want to make sure that our soft flex is laying side by side underneath the crimp tube, okay? If it's laying side by side, when I make that crimp, the, the, each little channel of the crimp is going to have its own piece of soft flex inside and that makes for a sturdier crimp. So I'm coming in with my Zeron crimping plier and see how I can kind of turn this, see how I pull my soft flex apart like that? I Now when I crimp, and I hope you guys can see this, as I crimp, can you see how both of those little channels now have a piece of soft flex in there? That's the kicker, you guys. If you can get it right here like this and make sure that it's nice and crimped all the way across, you're going to be in good shape. Okay? So then, I'll turn this to the side and I'll gently coax. And you can see, let me see if I can line it up with the camera, I can gently kind of coax that crimp tube so I fold it and then I give it a little hug on the sides so it's nice and closed. Okay, So now I've got my loop for my clasp closure. I've got my Be Still Heart and I've got my crimp all right here. Now later I could come on and add a crimp cover if I wanted. Um, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to go ahead and start our stringing. Oh, Emily just joined us. Hi, Em. Good morning. So you could, if you wanted 
to, I could start off with a small, tiny bead to help things, you know, as Janice likes to say, give things more air or make things taper out a little bit more. So I'm going to grab, um, I'm going to grab our little two millimeter. Brand one's going to help me find them. Or two millimeter. Yeah, perfect. Sorry, I didn't grab them earlier, but all of you can say good morning to Emily while I was looking at them. See this little two millimeter round? I use this a lot for tapering. So let me. It doesn't have to be a two millimeter metal bead, it could be a size 11 seed bead, right? But we want that connection to be as elegant as possible. So I'm using this six millimeter melon bead and I'm going to put that on. And now the design, what the design calls for, and I'm also going to put that two millimeter bead on the other side. like so. Then I'm going to add my ring. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my bead on the other side. Now I added a seven millimeter ring but I'm going to add it here. So can you guys see how it's offsetting the design? So I'm going to come in, I'm going to add that ring on two, if that makes sense. So see how now it's starting to offset it like this? And that offsetting is what covers the uh, your stringing material. So let me string this up just a little bit so we can see how this is going. I'm going to go one and then the other and I'll look at a few of your questions. Uh, Gita is asking are these the large hold two millimeter gold filled beads? That's right. And Sharon you were asking about crimp covers. I do use crimp covers a lot. I like them very much. Um, I think that they hide a lot of the mechanics of the piece, which I don't always want to see. So I just bop in back and forth. I put on a bead on one, put on a jump ring, then put a bead on the opposite side, and put on a jump ring. So let's take a look, let's bring things in together, and let's see how things look now. There we go. Can you see how the, the pattern is established? And yeah, Anna, a little bit of that thread will show, especially at the beginning. So see that here? This would be a perfect space if you wanted to add a charm. You could, um, add a few beads there. You could also, if you wanted to, instead of putting in that first strand just singly, you could put this first strand in, let me make sure everything is sitting nicely. Bear with me here just a second. I'm going to actually put these two strands, let's see if I can get them through that gold filled bead. Yes, I sure can. See how those two strands go in? Now I can put both of these strands through this first six millimeter. There we go. And look at how clean that looks. Now let me see if I'll put it through here. 
and then I'll just quickly put this back together go through one and two because you know you guys right you're the boss of these beads so you're making this fit your design needs so I purposefully didn't look at any tutorials really before I did this because I kind of wanted to have my own take on this so thanks for bearing with me I like to you know we all take inspiration so but I like to kind of make up you know march to my own tune as it were right which I hope you guys do as well so look at that I think that this section this starting I don't mind the way that looks and this guy just kind of hangs out down there like that you could also put two um, two jump rings at this point or what I was thinking even if we start it um, back to where we were going offset this way we could put a few of these little gold beads there as well so let's see what that looks like and then I'll just keep moving forward okay so I've got this single strand and you guys, this is how, when we are working out our projects, you know, working out our designs, this is how I do it. There's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of kind of playing around to see what works best. Um, you know, I, just like you guys, try and figure out what's the right thing to do. Right? I hope I'm not alone in that. Right? Right? I know it does, Randy. It does need a little bit of engineering, but that's the fun part of this, I think. There we go. So now I can see, yep, three of those little beads. Maybe four. Maybe I like four. Four of those little beads, I think, covers that up. Smaller jump ring. Let's try it, Nancy. Good. Point. So I'm going to go ahead and use the 6 millimeter. Alright. I know, Bev, I can't wait to see how I end it either. <laughs> I think I'm going to do it with another uh, wire end. So let's put this guy on. Let's go back and forth. So now, yep, that one little guy is not quite right. So I'm going to take that one off and we'll put this guy back on. I really like these purple beads. I um, always, I don't know, I don't use I think as much purple as maybe I should use because I really like it. But um, yeah, that smaller jump ring I think looks great with these. These are six millimeter jump rings with these six millimeter beads. Uh, I don't always, as I was saying though with the purple, I don't always, purple isn't always my go-to color with beads. So I think it's kind of fun. You guys remarked on the purple colorway we did on free tip on uh, Facebook Live on Wednesday. So let's go this two, and we'll go one more, and let's test this out. <laughs> purple is a good color for me. I d yeah, I need to maybe explore a little more in the purple world, I guess. So you can see, here we go. It's a little bit of a tighter look right? That's not bad. Not bad at all. I, I, I like that. So let me make a section. Let's just, uh, let's keep going, shall we? Let me put a couple. Let's do, so I've done three there. So let's close a few more of these guys, shall we? Close these guys up. And we can just quickly do some jump ring closing here. And the faster, you know, I just hold, you can hear, did you hear that little click in there? If I just hold my hand stationary, my left hand, my non-dominant hand, as I close these up, my right hand's doing all the heavy lifting. Okay, so bam, and pop that sucker closed. Done and done. And so that's kind of the speed way speed demon way 
of doing this. Okay. Alrighty. I did want to stack just two to see how a double stack might look. So let's put two on, shall we? I'll put this one on here and then this one. Teresa, your question was, does bead shop carry closed soldered jump rings? Not yet. We have one soldered jump ring that's coming down the pike um, that we're using on a specific project that's coming up, but we will be adding more soldered jump rings because I think they're really, really handy. So look at how nice that doubled one looks too. Gives a little, I like it a little off center and it also I think fills things up a little bit nicer. I like it. So let's uh, let's just press on. We'll keep going. So yeah I'm sorry to see my mom had a little bit of dental work done this morning so she's a little under the weather. So feel better soon mom. That's no fun. Yeah, look at I like that double. How do you feel about the double? I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's good. Oh yeah, the Mobius circle, Mary. You were saying uh, that you like to take three jump rings and make a Mobius circle with them. I do that too. I like that spacer. I'll have to do that one as a free tip Friday. That would be good times, I think, right? I think that would be fun. And then what I'll do, since I don't have double ones here, I don't want to have to take this apart. So before I crimp it, I'll probably just close some jump rings right around here, 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 and here to make it all match. But I think the double really works for me. So let me just keep pressing on. I'll press on, I'll press on. And you just want to continue to go back and forth with your design and the way I'm f the the hand of this piece it's we don't want it to be super stiff which is why I think um, maybe using this double jump ring is a good idea and also using some kind of stringy material that blends in pretty nicely I think that will work um, that probably works probably the best but the um, oh yeah I could I could alternate the double and single so I've got the three right there so maybe I'll just do three singles and especially since we're doing this I'm doing this in real time it'll hasten hasten our um, my making of this piece but two pliers are the key you guys to good jump ring management good jump ring closing Thanks. I like designing on the fly. You know, it really keeps, I don't know, I think it keeps you sharp. Plus, you have to make some decisions. You know, I can't agonize over this, right? I can't sit there and go, oh, should I do this or should I do that? I have to make some decisions and then go with it. So let's close a few more. Also, when I close this up, I don't want to, when I clasp it, I don't want this to be too tight. That would be the death knell for this piece. So I am going to string it all the way to the end so you guys can see how I close it. So take a sip of your coffee or whatever hydrating drink <laughs> you're having and tuck in because I'm going to go, I'm going to go for it here. So let's do that single. We'll alternate the single. And again, these are the six millimeter melon beads. It would also be fun, I think, to alternate the colors of the bead in this pattern. 
don't you think? Um, having, you know, uh, you could mix this purple and this blue, I think, would look beautiful in it. Whoops, not a jump ring. I need a bead. But it's really up to you. You could also alternate. We could pop a little bead um, over in that little space, especially if you had like a little tube bead or something that would fit. So, you know, experimenting. That's why I say this is a really cool uh, weekend project, I think, because it does lend itself to experimentation. And that's one of the things that I hope that you take away from our projects here at beadshop.com, that you use them as starting points for, um, as springboards, you know, and as you jump in and, you know, kind of create and follow our patterns, and then you're inspired and hopefully empowered with the techniques that we share to start creating your own looks, because there's nothing more satisfying at least in my book, uh, than, you know, to create a piece of jewelry that you're super, super proud of. Uh, the thread I'm using here, just as a reminder, is the Softflex. It's the .014 Softflex beading wire. So it really has a lot of movement here, right? And it also is sturdy enough that it'll give a little bit of body to the bracelet without it being too floppy, okay? So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to say I need to string, we're going to string another section of the three right here. Um, and it looks like I've got about two more inches. So one more of each of these, um, of these sections. And so uh, Gwenda was asking, um, do they come in blue or teal? Yeah, Ma, I think all the collection of the melon beads, um, there's some really, I think, good colors right in the Gwen wheelhouse. So um, we also have a beautiful one that is kind of um, a silver, like a mercury glass color which I also, I'm really having a moment with those right now. So there's three for one section, and then I need six closed for the other. I like these smaller jump rings. This is the six millimeter size, but as you saw earlier when we were testing it out, that seven millimeter works as well. And you could do mixed metals. You could even maybe do three jump rings and mix them. Do a silver, a gold, and a copper. I think that would also look cool. So, you know, you decide, um, you decide what works for you. There we go. So I've got all my jump rings. So let's, let's go on to the home stretch, shall we? Let's do one of these. And I think just a single one strand of the melon beads uh, will work. Will be plenty for this project. Get these guys on and just weave or waver back and forth from one strand to the next. These beads have nice big holes, so they're pretty easy to string up, get everything going. Pretty simple. And let's do this guy, and let's do just to, to double check. You know what I always like to check lengthwise and I pretty much just wrap it around my wrist. I try and visualize how long um, the clasp is going to be about here. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more section. And we can see where we're at with our length here. So we're at about, we're at about five. We're about five inches now. Maybe a little bit shorter. Maybe four and three quarters. So let's do our doubled up one here. And you know what? I bet I'm going to use every single bead that I have on here. Textured jump rings would look great. And you could elongate, if you don't have quite enough beads, you could always elongate the length using um, more jump rings to make your beads go a little bit further. 
but I have a second strand here in case I need it. So, all right, we're getting really close. So maybe I do need maybe one more section because it looks like if I measure the section with the single and the double rings, that's only about an inch and a half. So let's get a little bit of a longer, a little bit of a longer closure here. So, and I've started with my single, my one bag of rings as well. So it looks like I have two, four, six, six of those rings left. So let's go ahead and close those guys up. Oh, but I still have a whole bag over here. I still have plenty. I was like, where are the rest of my, my rings? I've got plenty of rings. So we'll do a few more of these guys. And like I said, the color of the rings I think would be nice in a mixed metal kind of a color way. I think they would be really pretty. But it really just depends on what works for you. You could, I think, also mix up your bead choices, especially with semi-precious beads. I think they would look really nice. You could use a four millimeter and a six millimeter and alternate. So you could get a little bit of a, <coughs> pardon me, a little bit of a different pattern going on there. Let's get this one going here, okay. So let's go back to our single. It looks like I have three beads left. So let's see how much or how much length this one strand of melons gives me for your reference if you're using the melons. And again, like I said earlier, I will go ahead and photograph this when it's done and write up a nice blog post that has all of the ingredients for you guys. But if I know you guys, you're already rifling through your bead stash to see what you've got going on. There we go, back and forth. Sorry if my hands are in the way. Yeah, and the replays, thank you, Gita, for pointing that out. You can always find the replays of all of our Facebook Lives, not only our Facebook Live, our main broadcast on Wednesday, but also our Free Tip Fridays. You can find them on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel doesn't have all of the comment thread that our Facebook Live does, but the video is there, and it's there for you anytime. You can also find them. We archive them on beadshop.com, our website. Um, you can also find them on our main Facebook page here for beadshop.com as well. Whoops, I misstrung that one. Good thing I caught it. You guys weren't watching. No, you were watching. I was just too fast for you. There we go. And let me put one more of these guys on, and let's see what we've got. Okay. So lengthwise, yes, door-to-door, -door, I think this is going to be about right. So I always include my clasp length when I'm measuring. So you can see, let me measure this with the clasp. Let me get it a little bit in center frame so you guys can see this. If I look at this portion here, from the clasp all the way to where my gold beads started, that's about an inch, okay? And if we look at this whole bracelet, we're at about, it's almost about six and a half inches. So with this um, section here that I'm going to be putting on, the length should be about right. So let's close it off, shall we? We shall. 
So on this side, it looks like I finished it with a few of my little two millimeter beads. So I'll go ahead for the sake of continuity. But these don't have to be the gold filled beads. They could be um, they could be seed beads, size 11 seed beads would work out well, I think. Let's put these three, but I like having these two millimeter and I think we also carry them in a three millimeter. Um, it's a good little bead to have. So this all comes together. Now, this is the thing, you guys, with a bracelet like this, especially with all of this kind of weaving and stuff that's going, going around, in order for this bracelet to be wearable and not too stiff, we have to put the right amount of play into this piece so it moves, okay? So movement, movement, movement is key. So let's go ahead and put on our crimp tube. Let me grab one. Come on now, let me dump out a few so I've got a few here. So things might get a little bit tricky because I've got two strands. But these two millimeter crimp tubes are pretty big on the interior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my crimp tube on and I'm going to put on my wire guard and I'm going to test my wire guard to see if I can get two of these strands through the wire guard. My guess is no, but I've been wrong before. But in this case, I'm right. So if I just have, if I can just get a wire guard through one, I'm not going to despair. I'm just going to come in, put this through as if I didn't have this other strand there. I'll put on the other side of my clasp. And I'm going to go back through my crimp tube with that active piece that's come through my wire guard. Okay? Like so. Now, see what I've done here? Let me get a little bit tighter so you guys can see this. As I came through with that one piece of soft flex, I came through my crimp tube, up through my wire guard, slid my toggle clasp on, and then back down. So I've got one piece of my soft flex going this way, and one piece of my soft flex looping back through and back. So yes, Gita, I have three threads through this crimp tube. Both of these that are finishing off, up, and then one coming back down and through. So to tighten everything, I just give it a little tug, like so. And before I ever, ever crimp, let me make this a little bit larger so you guys can see, I close my clasp. And I do this on everything, everything, everything that I make with Soft Flex. Because I really want this to have that movement and if I crimp it when it's tight and flat, um, it's not going to have this movement. It's going to be too stiff. So I always close it up. Now, I'm going to come in. These little beads want to walk around a little bit. So what I might do is I might add, I don't know, maybe a few more. Or maybe I might not worry about it. What I'm going to do right now is not worry about it. Don't pull it too tight, okay? Because you don't you don't want this to scrunch up like this and offset each other too too much. So again, make sure, like Jana says, there's air. So I'm checking before I crimp because you know it can all end in tears if it's crimped incorrectly. So take your time, breathe it out. 
now I'm ready to crimp. I'm checking to make sure I don't have too much extra thread over here. Might want to give it just a little bit of more of a tug. I always say that closing the bracelet sometimes takes as long as stringing the bracelet. I don't know if you guys find that to happen, but there we go. Stiff enough so that it's holding everything in place, but loose enough so it's not supple. All right, you guys. Let me Let me come in, I'm gonna crimp. Holding that crimp flat. Crimping with the courage of my convictions. Checking my crimp to make sure that it looks good and that it's crimped all the way across. And let's fold it. Now, I really want to make sure that this crimp is crimped because if it's not crimped correctly, this one wire is only going through one time, right? So it could pull out. So we want to make sure, you guys, that it's closed like we mean it, okay? So now I'm just going to come in and I'm going to clip away my extra soft flex. This is definitely not one to weave the soft flex back through. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't squeeze that the little legs. I can take this apart now. I didn't squeeze the little legs of this crimp of the wire guard closed before I crimped it, but I can do it now just so it looks nicely. And now I'm going to come in, be very careful not to nick anything else but cutting the soft flex. And I do that, I really very mindfully put my uh, cutter here and I push the cutter, I check it, I push the cutter away from me and I cut. So I only nick this. There's a question about these um, crimping pliers. Um, Danielle, these, if you don't have them, run, don't walk. This is the Zuron crimping plier. I just love it. It has, as you noticed, a narrow little jaw here on the top. So I use those all the time just to double check. I give what I, say, what I call giving my crimp tube a hug. So I just give it a little hug there and there. Okay. So let's close this up. And let's see what we've got. I think it looks pretty nice. Let's see if it fits. Let's see what this, the, the size has come to. Let me see if I can do it on my own. I may not be able to. It looks like, yes, it looks like it fits okay. What I would do, if I were making this for me, I have a six and a half, inch wrist. I like my bracelets to sit just a little bit larger for me. So what I would have done, this took one strand of the melon beads. What I would have done maybe is found a contrast bead to put maybe here and here so I wouldn't have to get a whole other strand or maybe I'd just get a whole other strand, whatever. But it feels, for my liking, though there's air, there's room underneath it, but for my size wrist, um, I think I would go one more bead per side. So, uh, but this would fit my mom's wrist perfectly. And then there were questions about the crimp covers, right? Yeah, the crimp cover would just go on and I've got them sitting right here. So you could come in, and especially since I've left some air on this project, you could just come in and we could put them on 
right after the fact. So I'll do that. There it goes. It goes right on. And then I use my little Zeron tool to help me close that cover. Look at that. Done on that side. And look at how nice that closure, that closure looks. And we'll do one over here on this end. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you guys you've got enough room because you don't want this to look to be too tight. So air on the side of air. Okay. We'll get this one in too. And those little tips on that Zeron tool really help you to close that cover. And then if there's a little bit of an opening in the seam of that crimp cover, you can just press down on it just gently with your crimping tool and close it. I know it would fit you great, Mama. Let me close this so it's closed up nicely. So there you have it, you guys. Our pretty little My Take on the Goddess Bracelet. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as I would recommend, if you are getting the um, the materials for this, I might go for it and get two of these so you have plenty if you want to make it um, with the one strand. You're just eking by with the um, with the amount that you need. One bag of the jump rings, I use the six millimeter jump rings, one bag of those jump rings should be plenty. And just as a reminder, I did use the Softflex .014, but I'll go ahead and list all of these ingredients right on the website. So let me uh, turn this around. Let me see if I can get you guys back into position as I rotate you over there for a second. And then I'm going to rotate, um, rotate this up so I can see everyone. I think. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's like a, it's like an earthquake at beadshop.com. There we go. Okay, I'm in position. There we are. All right. Thanks, you guys. All right, so I hope you had fun. That was a little long, but I did want you guys to be able to say goodbye to our Gracie and wish her well. And I'm glad you guys liked this project. I think it's a fun one for the weekend, and I know that we've been talking a lot about it on our Facebook group, the Bead Shop uh, community. Um, we also have, don't forget to open your newsletters this weekend. We've got uh, some cool stuff happening, um, and we're all getting prepared because Janice is going to be here on this coast all next week and she'll be on Facebook Live with me on Wednesday. If you haven't spied her uh, sample project yet, it's a beautiful one. Um, we'll have it posted up on the website soon. Um, it'll be up at the beginning of the week so you guys will be able to see that. And we're really going to have a lot of fun doing some mindful stringing and designing with Janice. Um, so if you're kind of stuck in a design rut, this is going to be a great one for you guys to look at. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you guys on Wednesday for Facebook Live. Alrighty, bye-bye. <laughs>